<laughs> no, I, I can't laugh yet. I've got to hold it in. Boom! Before this video starts, because YouTube has been demonetizing every single video I make, I decided to make channel membership so I don't end up homeless and on the streets tonight. So if you enjoy my videos and I make you laugh, feel free to support me by becoming a member on my channel by pressing the join button right next to my username below. Enjoy the video. Hello chat, welcome back. And we're about to put Sakuna in a pack. Ooh, every time, every time, every time I spit, it's a bar. That was off the top too. Yo guys, it's Ricardo, and we're back for another episode of the Jujutsu Kaisen Manga Review. Today, in 5 hours, we will be getting chapter 261, which is at 4am. So never say I don't do anything for you guys. I could be asleep right now, in bed with Mei Mei. But I'm here making a manga review for 50,000 men and 5,000 girls. Those are my actual stats, by the way. Last chapter, I mean, let's be honest. We all know how the last chapter ended. It, we all know. So I'm not even gonna waste your time. We're just here to see if Gojo really actually came back. And I'm recording this part of the intro before the chapter comes out. So if you hear a sudden change in my tone, you, you know what happened. But before that, the official leaker Miyamura posted some interesting stuff on Twitter. So let's take a second to talk about it. Miyamura posted a tweet asking for predictions to JJK261 and I just want to highlight some of the replies. You're, you're wrong for this and you know that, you know you're wrong for this. <laughs> Gojo comes back, saves Megumi and brings Nobara back to defeat Sukuna. And then what? Everybody claps? Get out of here with your nerdy ab. For now, that's everything we need to talk about but let's get right into the Jujutsu Kaisen chapter review. Oh wait, hold on. Before this video starts, if you're looking for other anime fans to talk about the leaks with or anime in general, join my Discord server. There's over 2,000 members and it's always active. Like, always. In fact, it's a bit too active. These niggas need to get a life. But discord.gg slash Ricarlo. I'm active in there too if you want to talk to me and I usually respond to every DM I get as long as it's not something like... Yeah. But on with the video. Miyamura! I will never forgive you for this. You think you funny, huh? You think everything a joke, right? Okay, I hope it's as funny when I break your legs. Before the chapter released, Miyamura posted this tweet. Gojo Satoru is officially back, but with Kenjaku's mind. And I know Itadori was sat somewhere reading this like, no, it can't be. We're, we're cooked. Itadori, I was thinking the same thing. I was about to go deal with Gege off screen, if you know what I mean. But Miyamura is just a lion ass nigga, and the chapter officially begins back with Itadori with his hand inside Sukuna. Pause. Reset. The chapter officially begins with Itadori still inside Sukuna. Pause again. The chapter begins with Itadori deciding he will crush Sukuna's heart whilst getting flashbacks of Choso. So he is inside another man whilst thinking of another man. I don't know how many pauses I can give you Itadori, it might just be time to admit it. In order to stop Itadori, Sukuna prepares to chant on main expansion when he sees Gojo standing. Sukuna is in disbelief wondering if it's really him, but pushes away the thought because he says it's impossible. Is it impossible Sukuna, or do you just want it to be impossible? You didn't like the way Gojo touched you last time did you? And that's only weird if you make it weird. But Sukuna snaps back to reality and suddenly realizes who it is. Gojo has stitches on his forehead. <laughs> this hurts me as much as it hurts you guys because it's official that Gojo is not the one who is back. It is Yuta Okotsu inside of Gojo's body. Pause, and there's gonna be a lot of those today. So Gojo is not back, but Yuta is. And do me a favor, name one person who woke up today and was like, damn, I really wanna see Yuta this chapter. Just one. I guess this was a half win for Gojo fans and Sukuna fans, but I know Sukuna fans was probably waiting for the leaks with their hands shaking. No one, damn, if Gojo's really back, it's up for us. Like the laughing at Sukuna fans video was about to get posted tomorrow. Y'all got away this time. By the way, fun fact, this tweet already has over 2 million views. So I expect this video to have 2 million views as well and 100,000 likes. In fact, if you like the video, Gege said he's gonna bring Toji back. That's just what I heard. That's just what I heard. Don't worry, the video's not over. I just wanted to take 10 seconds to say if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing because we're trying to hit 100,000 subs by the end of the month. So if I do make you laugh, you may as well subscribe. I post every day too, but on with the video. 
Next up, we get a flashback of Yuta deciding to have Rika devour Kenjaku and copy his curse technique, which is what allowed Yuta to change bodies in the first place. Maki objects to this plan and says, Yuta, you really gonna let your girl have another man in her mouth? Lock in, bro. But Hakari says it's fine as long as they have one condition. They only use this plan when everyone is wiped out and they have no other option left. And Hakari, bum, where are you, nigga? I know Arami isn't that tough. We could use some help out here, by the way. Me, Itadori, and Yuta are fighting for our lives, all three of us. Where are you? Kusakabe asks Shoko, can't we just copy Limitless from Gojo's body if Rika devours him? But Shoko corrects him, saying, you can't use Limitless without the six eyes, dumbass. But deep down, Shoko just doesn't want Rika to touch Gojo. That's her man. And my man. Kusakabe was sharing his one brain cell with Hakari that day, so he says, can't we just copy the six eyes too? To which Shoko replies, the six eyes are a part of Gojo's physical body, not a curse technique. Therefore, it can't be copied. And Maki asks Yuta, you can only use your curse technique copy for five minutes. So what happens after five minutes? Yuta responds, he does not know. Meimei takes a second to explain the pros and cons of Yuta copying Kenjaku's curse technique, and she mentions that after switching bodies, there is a possibility Yuta will lose his curse technique and will have to live in Gojo's body forever. Here's what Meimei explains. First, if Kenjaku's curse technique is that of the constant or intermittent operation type, meaning always active, the physical body or soul won't be able to be maintained and he will die. Two, if the curse technique operates intermittently, he won't die immediately, but eventually, he will. Three, if the curse technique is a single-use, one-time technique, he will be able to use Limitless even past five minutes. So after switching bodies, it is completely possible that Yuta's curse technique will be completely discarded and he will have to entirely live as Gojo in his body from now on. And honestly, if I'm Yuta, that doesn't sound so bad. Gojo's 6'3", tall, Handsome, white hair, blue eyes. Yuta's a better man than me, because if I swapped into Gojo's body, you would not be catching me on the battlefield with Sukuna. I promise you that. As soon as I swap, I'm teleporting away and getting a ticket back to Africa. I'm about to show these bitches what Limitless really means, you know? Yuta says he understands and acknowledges that this is a last resort. So he will try and fight Sukuna with his own domain and technique first, and only if he can't win, he accepts Gojo's body. And we know how that went. But Maki and Kusakabe have a problem. Kusakabe says it's a good plan, but it's just not humane. And bruh, Yuta, if you don't press this nigga, Yuta says, what do you mean humane? We're about to fight the strongest sorcerer in history and you're talking about being humane? If we can win just by throwing away our humanity, we shouldn't even be talking about this, bum. And W press by Yuta. Let me see a W press in the comments, because Kusakabe was actually bugging here. You think Sakuna cares about being humane? You got bigger things to worry about, buddy. That unemployment check running out soon too. Time to start working for once. And my hatred for Kusakabe's lazy ass aside, Yuta asked everyone, are you all afraid of having to become a monster to fight Sakuna? And Maki says, no, Yuta, we're just worried about you. But Yuta ain't taking that. He says, you worried about the wrong thing. What about Gojo sensei? Is he not important? Haven't we been pushing all the burden of becoming a monster onto him? If Gojo sensei loses, who else will become a monster? If no one intends to become one, I'll do it myself. And Maki, I know you ain't talking. You went to Thailand and got a BBL. They filled it with feathers and dirt. It's disgusting, he said. That's what he said in the manga. The scene switches and Yuta tells Gojo that he'll take over his body if he loses. Gojo says, sure bro, but I don't plan on losing and I don't care what happens to my body neither. Plus 200 aura. They talk about whether Yuta is a descendant of the Fujiwara or Sugawara name, but it seems a bit random. But if Yuta is a descendant of the Sugawara name, it means him and Gojo are distant relatives. But Uro-san told Yuta he was a descendant of Fujiwara blood, to which Gojo says, well, I don't know, maybe you're both. Your mum was a ho- Gojo tells Yuta that he was born under better circumstances than he was, so if Yuta can't utilize that advantage and do something, he's lame. And he starts talking about Yuta's sloppy cursed energy. He's about to go fight Sukuna, but he's still pressing his own students. Gojo then asks his students to go away because he doesn't want them to see this bloody sight, especially since he doesn't know what he's about to do is right. Gojo says, if I lose to Sukuna and all the old geezers in the room are gone, Gaku Ganji Grams will stand at the top of Jujutsu headquarters, meaning there probably won't be any more chaos like the post Shibuya incident. 
Gojo once again tells his students to go back, but they all refute him. They say no. Yuta tells Gojo he doesn't have to become a monster by himself, but Gojo says it's something he has to do, because at that moment, he was left behind, and he has to catch up to him. Talking about Ghetto. The scene switches, and Yuta is cut in half due to Sukuna's world cutting slash, and we see the medical ward we we brought him to. Arata uses his curse technique to avoid Yuta's wounds from getting worse, but it might be too late, as Yuta says he's only conscious now thanks to Rika, but he's starting to reach his limit. Shoko tells Yuta that she stitched Gojo's body up so it's ready, but once Yuta switches, use reverse curse technique at max capacity to completely heal the body. And boom, we're back on the battlefield. Sakuna and Yuta in Gojo's body both open their domains. The narrator says Gojo had already sown the solution to Sakuna's open barrier domain. And the chapter ends with this amazing panel of Sukuna using Malevolent Shrine and Yuta using Gojo's Unlimited Void. And this was actually a crazy chapter. I did stream it by the way, it had 25,000 views and thank you to everyone who stopped by, it was fun. If you want to get notified every time I post a video or stream, you can join my Discord server and you'll get a ping every time. Discord.gg slash Ricarlo. That's the end of the chapter. It's 8am and I've been awake since 4am so I'm gonna sleep. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. I'd appreciate it. I'm so tired and there is a break next week. Tomorrow, I'm dropping a video called Ranking Jujutsu Kaisen YouTubers. So if that sounds like something you want to watch, you may as well subscribe now. See you guys tomorrow. Wait, wait, stop. I was looking in the selfies and fish channel of my Discord and I realized you niggas have no drip. Especially you, that is not a drip, I don't care what they told you. So let me help you guys out. Usually anime merch is trash, but take a look at these pants, right? You can't tell me these cargoes are not fire, they are. The compression shirt bundles too? Ooh, and the chains? The plushies? This shirt was so fire, I actually bought it. Thank you to Anime Express for sponsoring this video. If you guys want Japanese style clothes or anime merch, go to AnimeExpress.store and use code RICOLO10 for 10% off your entire purchase. The whole thing, I'll, I'll pay for all of it. The link is at the top of the description. Sukuna fans are banned from purchasing and Mei Mei fans need to be locked up.